in the last class we have discussed about that first question, what is chemical engineering. But uh, I do not know how many of you have the real uh, definitions of chemical engineering. I have one definition, this is given by A I C H E, I do not know whether you heard of this or not. What is that A I C H E? Huh? American, ah, American Institute American of Institute Chemical Engineers, of Chemical. we remember everything about America. <laughs> okay, so, American Institute of Chemical Engineers definition, I will just read, please write, because it will, let it be there in the books, okay, I do not know whether you really spend time to understand this, but let it be there, I think when time is required, I think when this is required, so you can try to use this definition. Yeah, the official definition of AACHE is sufficiently broad to include all aspects of the profession. Now, you can write within uh, inverted commas. Chemical engineering is the application of the principles of physical sciences, comma, together with the principles of economics and human relations to fields that pertain directly, pertain, P -E -R -T -A -N, that pertain directly to processes and process equipment in which matter is treated to effect E F F E C T to effect a change in state, comma, energy content or composition. Okay, that is the one. I think inverted commas closed. Yeah. So, uh, Gani, can you read this louder so that everyone I think I would also give the meaning. Okay, okay. Physical sciences together with the principles of economics and human relations to fields that pertain directly to processes and process equipments in which matter is treated to affect a change in state, energy content or composition. Yeah, I think what is that you said, the first one, chemical engineering is the application of the principles of physical sciences. Principles missing? Yeah, I think some people would have missed it. Huh? Yeah, chemical engineering is the, what is the meaning of that? Can you just read it and then just try to understand? What is the meaning of that? What is the meaning of that? Louder, I think you know, you can interact with me, there is no problem, you should not be afraid that you know, you are not able to tell and all that, we are all learning. So, that is why absolutely there is no fear for making mistakes, you should not be afraid of making mistakes. You should happily make the mistake, uh, mistakes as many as possible, but only thing is you should not repeat them. Okay? Tomorrow also you cannot do the same mistake. Yeah. Yeah, all sciences. Yeah. That we using the knowledge of that sciences and about the, the economic viability of for the, uh, the economic profit. Uh, yeah, economic principles. Yeah, so that means whether process is economy, economic or not. Yeah, then. And also how it affect or the interaction of the process with the uh, in general uh, and other people. The environment has not come here in this one. Okay, yeah, but you know, don't create your own definition. Just understand this definition. Yeah, then we will create our own definitions later. Yeah. The relation to human. Yeah, you know, uh, the human relations also are very, very important. That's what you know. This is physical sciences. That means maths, physics, chemistry. These all, of course, chemical engineering is based on that mainly. Now we have biochemistry also. This is very one of the oldest uh, definitions. So pertain to the. Uh, that pertain directly to processes and process equipment in which matter is treated to affect a change in state, energy content or composition. This last sentence also state, energy content or composition. So, that means you know uh, uh, during the reaction if everything is in gas phase, so then you have to condense that and then you can make it as a liquid or liquid to solid. Okay? That is the state uh, thing and also energy content energy content that means it may be at very high temperatures you have to cool it to room temperature because you cannot store everything only at high temperatures so the changes in composition or energy content or state that covers everything that means in which equipment you are changing the state condenser 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 state, because sometimes during the reaction itself precipitation occurs and then you know that is itself is the product. Okay? So, this covers few equipment and also energy content. Energy content mostly of course, even in the reactors again you know you add uh, heat, remove heat and all that. that means you are trying to change the energy content of that and also 
composition in which uh, uh, equipment distillation columns, absorption columns and all that. So, that means, this also talks everything almost all the equipment. Okay? So, all this equipment you know finally, equipment design even though most of the young faculty members nowadays they get very bored about you also the, the moment you become faculty member also you hate uh, equipment design. Okay? Why? Because there are not ma much mathematics involved. There are only some rules that you know uh, to, to design for example, condensers or heat exchangers or distillation columns. You have some principles. So, just follow them and then design. So, what is the thrill there people say, but ultimately all the theory what you have developed finally, will go to this part. And if you neglect the end part and if you are very happy only with the theory part, then who will use your theory. Okay? So, that is the reason why all this entire thing is very important. We need theory to understand. right? like for example, distillation columns always we see it is vertical and also number of plates and all that. But now people started thinking about very small uh, size of the equipment for distillation and they use centrifugal force. When it is moving the liquid will be just simply spread on the thin sheets at a very high speed you know. So, then thin in a thin uh, when you have very very thin uh, sheets of liquid then evaporation is much easier. right? So, the low volatiles will easily come out and uh, high volatiles will stay there. So, then you are separating very, very fast and uh, you have 20 meters, 30 meters uh, distillation columns. Now, we have become only 6 feet, 7 feet that means, 2, two meters, 3 meters. So, that is because of the new theory you are now able to think that at molecular level what is happening and how do you use that information to create very, very thin film and we know that when you have a very thin film of molecules, it is very easy for the molecules to come out because resistance is simply less. right? So, that is the theory and using that theory you are able to develop this equipment. So, finally, the ultimate aim is only the equipment design. Otherwise, where do you conduct these reactions, where do you conduct uh, you know separation processes uh, or crystallization, all these processes where do you conduct unless you have this kind of equipment. And also nanotechnology, we very fashionable word to use, you know, many times. But at the end, what do you do with that nanotechnology? You should still design a reactor or some other equipment for, for our processes. So, that is why do not simply get carried away with these beautiful words unless you understand those words and unless you use those words properly for the final design. You see, ultimate aim of our uh, profession is to produce chemicals that is all. So, that is the second definition I just want to tell this is the official definition. The second definition is that you know a simple definition is a chemical engineer carries out large scale reactions developed in the laboratory by the chemist. Yeah. So, the chemist will definitely try to find out whether the reaction is feasible or not, but in a minute scale micrograms. But with micrograms, I think nowadays if you go, if you get headache after this class and go to uh, hospital and then they will give you dispirin tablet or uh, some other you know analgin or uh, you know many, many tablets are there. Okay? So, if you look at them, then there will be amount also given 500 mg. So, they may not produce even this 500 mg for one person sufficient. Okay? So, that is what actually happened in penicillin production they could not produce on large scale. One patient actually in the UK, um, he has got some uh, infection that, uh, that made him I think one week or so or four days, five days all right. And because they could not continue, they, they did not have sufficient amount of uh, antibiotics they produce in the laboratory and afterwards he died. That is I mean it is bad thing to say like that, but it is operation successful patient, patient died. Because by, as far as antibiotics are concerned that was successful, they know how to produce now on a small scale. But unfortunately, this patient could not get sufficient amount of antibiotics, so he died. Right? So, that is why our business is as chemical engineers to produce chemicals on very, very large scale. Generally, the starting point is a chemist. He would have produced and told that yeah, this product is there, so it may be useful for this, this, this and all that. Good? Yeah. Then again, I think this uh, some of you may be knowing a jocular definition of chemical engineering. You know, 
Anyone knows about this jocular definition of chemical engineer? No. Yeah, I will tell you a chemical engineer is one, uh, another definition, this is a jocular definition, you can write jocular definition. A chemical engineer is one who talks engineering in the presence of chemists. A chemical engineer is one who talks engineering in the presence of chemists, comma, chemistry in the presence of engineers, chemistry in the presence of engineers, comma, and politics in the presence of both. That is the definition. Okay. What do you understand this? That means, we do not know sufficient amount of chemistry, we do not know sufficient amount of engineering and when both are there, I think our ignorance should not come out, we divert the topic to politics, because politics anyone can talk, because everyone has an opinion in politics. right? Yeah, But there is a, there is a beautiful uh, meaning behind this definition, even though it is jocular definition, it is not really jocular, it is very serious definition, because behind many jokes, there is serious uh, information. Okay? That means, this is the only engineering, which is based on science. Okay. From the beginning, right? that means what? Unless you understand basic chemistry, you cannot carry out further your processes. That is what is the meaning. Right? So, a chemist who is a scientist, who has sufficient knowledge in that science, right? so he should have sufficient information, how to produce this chemical. It is not by trial and error. Theoretically, also he, he should be able to find out that okay, this is feasible, because of this reason, this reason, this reason. So, afterwards, he cannot produce large amounts, because of you know engineering coming there. For example, I told you mixing is a kind of engineering principle, heat exchange is a kind of engineering principle right? on large scale. How do you do that? So, that is why engineering will come into picture. So, engineering knowledge is necessary. In fact, in the beginning, it is applied chemists, not even pure chemists. Applied chemists and mechanical engineers are the people who are producing chemicals. I am talking about 1800s, 1700s. Okay. So, the definition of chemical engineer at that time was applied chemist plus mechanical engineer equal to chemical engineer. Right? And then they thought that okay, we need separate, separate profession, where we need some information on the science side. Of course, physics automatically comes when, whenever you have heat transfer, fluid flow and all that. Right? And without maths, you cannot quantify. The greatness of maths is anything you want to say in a number, maths automatically comes and unfortunately or fortunately, you have to tell a number. So, if someone asks, okay, tell me the design uh, of this particular reactor, you say, okay, use 1 meter cubed volume, 1 meter cubed is a number. And how do you calculate that 1 meter cubed and all that again, you have to use some equation. So, mathematics you can never neglect at all, it is a part of all the processes, every day also. Every day also, I think mathematics you use, I think, you know, when you have 20 rupees and go for Tiffany's and coffee may be 25 rupees. So, then you may come back over 5 rupees less subtraction. Okay. Nowadays, everything is costly. You know. I do not know what is how much is the, what is the cost Rahul? 6 rupees. Sir? 7. Ah, 7. 7 they are cribbing a lot, because this is subsidy given to the students. So, so that is why they are cribbing a lot. So, but anyway, anything, everything, uh, you know, there may be a time now coming you know, with the inflation that is going on. Even 100 rupees, you do not get one uh, coffee also. Okay, anyway, coffee is bad for health, do not drink. Okay. <laughs> so, that way you can escape. For that 100 rupees, you can buy a, a, a fruit, uh, a small fruit and then eat whatever fruit that comes. That is much better. Okay. So, this is another definition and the latest definition that is given by Den, I do not know whether you heard of him, Martin Den, D-E-N-N. -N. He has written a book uh, recently, maybe one year back or two years back. Chemical engineering and introduction. Chemical engineering and introduction. Okay, that is the name of the book. Huh? D E N N, double N. With one N, he is not happy. So, <laughs> D E N N, Martin Den. Okay. Martin Den. Okay. Good. He wrote that book, uh, Chemical Engineering and Introduction. In our library, also one or two books may be there. And uh, of course, he started at a high funda level and all that, but anyway, one of the definitions he has given, this is the maybe current definition, chemical, please write that, chemical engineering is the field of applied science that employs physical, comma, chemical 
comma and biochemical rate processes for the betterment of humanity that is the latest definition and if you go to uk chemical engineering site you will have a different definition if you go to india it will be a different uh, definition if you go to japan chemical engineering society and all that so they may have slight differential but the ultimate aim is to produce chemicals and biochemicals that's why chemical engineering and biochemical engineering no way different here you need chemistry background chemistry information for the reaction whether it is taking place or you know on a catalyst or all that theory and in biochemistry biochemical engineering you need information on biological processes right so if you have sufficient knowledge there and you know that there is a reaction that can be continue uh, that can be conducted then that information will automatically come into the reactor design so that is why chemical engineering and biochemical engineering or biotechnology if you are talking about production of chemicals in the industrial level at the industrial level okay so biochemical engineering or biotechnology or uh, chemical engineering all are same in fact chemical engineering is so wide for example environmental engineering many civil engineers start uh, environment engineering but the real environmental engineering is only with chemical engineering the reason is most of the pollution is from the chemical industries okay and civil engineers have come into picture because traditionally they were the people who are treating sewage and that sewage is mainly from human waste and kitchen waste and all that that's all so they are logically extended their field saying that okay we will also talk about these pollutions but it is chemical engineers who create pollution and also it is our business to control pollution now zero pollution you should have the processes you should have heard no green chemistry green engineering and all that so idea there is that you don't have to produce any waste product at all so it must be at the end everything should be useful okay the, those are the new processes which we are not yet started teaching in the chemical engineering few universities abroad i think they started but we don't have uh, green, green green chemical engineering or green processes so we don't have no rangana no yeah so and also sustainability engineering sustainability engineering environment always is coupled okay so that's why uh, new definitions will be coming depending on uh, the uh, situation current situation on the on this planet and this definition you see it is again very simple and straight forward applied science chemical engineering is the field of applied science that employs physical chemical and biochemical rate processes rate of reaction right so that rate of reaction you should use in the reactor design expression so that you you will produce and if you are able to produce you know using i told you dream reactor what is dream reactor yeah directly re reactor uh, react reactants to products at room temperature 100% conversion and uh, you know th that means there is no separation processes ha huh? no by products uh, no by products so separation process are not required because at room temperature in the beginning you don't have to heat uh, the reactants everything at room temperature so so beautiful i think you wouldn't to try to design that kind of processes dream that is what is really sustainable you don't need any energy try to produce ammonia at room temperature and room pressure you will be given nobel prize not one 10 yeah i think haber got only one because still is high temperatures are very high okay and pressures are very high at least reduce the pressure and uh, you know conduct the ammonia reaction ammonia synthesis reaction at uh, ambient pressure you will get one one uh, uh, nobel prize temperature also if you reduce okay and catalyst if you remove three <laughs> because now you need catalyst right what catalyst they used uh, iron. Iron. iron iron of course mixed with this light uh, yeah all other small uh, small metals are there but mainly it is iron okay and he found it in fact i was lucky to see his room where he has worked on this process you know in uh, university of karlsruhe in germany i also worked there for some time so at that time uh, i saw his room and his reactor has been now brought after i think uh, maybe i don't know how many years maybe 15 20 years of operation actual reaction reactor which he and uh, other person bosch haber and bosch that's why haber bosch process we say bosch was a is not directly chemical engineer but he declared himself as a chemical engineer 
because he was dealing <laughs> he was dealing with all chemical engineering processes in uh, BASF. BASF is a company you, you should have heard no. Yeah, BASF has a nice uh, expansion in uh, Germany, German language. So uh, he after he produced that in lab scale, lab scale reactor also is there. If you promise me that you will read the papers which I send, I can send wonderful information. But otherwise, I don't want to create e pollution. E pollution. That means I I send the paper to you, you just uh, click and save, and then you never open that again. Okay, that is pollution no? on your computer. You are not using that; it is waste. That is waste product only, right? So that is why if you promise all of you, if you promise me, I will read, and then then only I will send. I think in fact I have the picture of uh, his original reactor, lab scale as well as industrial scale. Now you appreciate. Most of these things we also teach in uh, process calculations. Whatever I am telling you now, right? But at that time you never really able to enjoy what we are trying to say. But at this point of time you enjoy. That is the reason why I repeat. Many people may be thinking that he does not know anything except this, so that is why he is repeating. People may be thinking, okay? But you know, I, I, because I enjoy, because at this point of time you enjoy more all these things. Otherwise, you know, whatever you learnt in school, you may not enjoy in school. You learn only, uh, you enjoy only when you come to UG or PG. Uh, how beautiful, uh, you know, we have learnt in the school. So that's why always there is a time lag. That's why I repeat all these things in my course, so that at least some of you may catch this and then try to enjoy. Okay? And there are some minds which have already been switched off. They come here, sit, laugh, and then go. But I think nothing will enter. Like black holes, at least people say radiation will come out. Okay, uh, you know radiation can be measured from black holes. Black hole means you know you cannot see anything. So I think uh, the, the human mind is if you switch off the brain, human mind is much worse than black hole. You don't know anything what's happening there. Okay, and perfect insulators are human brains. Yeah, if you are able to take and then put it, nothing will enter, nothing will come out. That's why at least you know some matter in uh, black hole will uh, radiate. Okay, so that is also not possible. So, if you already have, you know, normally you will have around 20-15 percent already switched off brains. They come, sit down, and then go. And those are the people who really spoil, you know, the juniors who are coming. Unfortunately, if those people are exposed to this 10 to 15 percent, they give all fully wrong information, complete total virus. You cannot clean it with anything. Okay, no antivirus dot is possible for that. So, unfortunately, many people will go and ask them only. They won't ask a good student. Good student means you will definitely tell no, no. This is good. This is bad, and clearly you can believe him. But unfortunately for them, it is everything bad except staying in the hostel. Okay, and seeing uh, movies and all that, right? So that is why this is very unfortunate if you ask them. So that is why I am not talking about that 10 percent. I don't know right now who is the 10 percent, but statistics show that the 10 to 15 percent already exist. Okay, but not able to pinpoint right now. But you know yourself. You definitely know whether you are enjoying it, or whether you want to learn, or simply come because your guide told, or someone else told that you have to take this. So it is a punishment. So 40 hours, 50 hours punishment. So that is what probably you are doing it. That's all. But anyway, if you don't have a choice, try to relax and enjoy. Okay, because all M.Tech people, you don't have a choice. It is compulsory for you. Okay, and I think PhD is also compulsory. Uh, PhD also, I think, compulsory because for their uh, Comprehensive or something. Okay, so that's why those who do not have choice try to learn something. If you have choice, put your hole through the ceiling and then go out. Okay, like Superman or something like that. You know, put a hole and go. Okay, good. So this is what is the complete answer for the first question. What is chemical engineering? Okay. Now the second question is, what do we do as chemical engineers? Okay. The reason is most of the chemical engineers are going for IT jobs. So they think that only going to IT job is chemical engineering. That is what is the job of the chemical engineer. So if you ask them to write what do chemical engineering do, go to Infosys, open the computer, and then do whatever they give exercise. That is what people may think. Okay, but what are the things what a chemical engineer can do? I'll just list out here and then discuss one by one very quickly. Okay. The second question is, what does a chemical engineer do? Oh, able 
to squeeze there. Yeah. The first one is research. process development process design and evaluation process design okay plan design Okay, I think I will write all these things in one plan design, construction and operation. Then we have product supervision. Plant technical service. technical service and then product sales. So, those are the things able to see last benches able to see you know size ok good. So, these are the ones uh, the first one is research ok chemical engineering automatically associated with research. Whereas, this research component if I take mechanical engineering example, it is not there. So, if you are designing a boiler or if, you, if they are designing a, a automobile, okay, generally the principles are known, but if I want to design a new chemical, I do not know anything. And how many chemicals you can list out? Many. In inorganic chemistry how many? In organic chemistry how many? How many chemicals? thousands of chemicals and the beauty with chemical engineering is every process has a flow chart. How do you develop that flow chart? Without a flow chart did you any any uh, did you any time see a particular uh, production of a chemical? Never. So, how that particular flow chart was developed? And now of course, if I know how do you produce sulfuric acid I do not have to do research even though it is possible. Okay. And nothing is saturated in chemical engineering. Those people who say that oh chemical engineering saturated means it is not chemical engineering saturated, it is his brain saturated. Okay. Because he is not able to see anything different. So, if this is saturated, he is happy, and then you know, like going to IT. IT, what is there? They give some instructions and then you follow on the computer and lifelong you do there. And if you are and they won't allow you, they will give you more money, but they will also give you more work and always sitting. So, that is why after 3 4 years you will have back pain ok stomach will be coming this much ok because I think where is the physical activity there is no physical activity there is no mental activity also because already everything is known. You just only enter 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 that is all I mean if you are developing a new software excellent if you are develop, if you are developing or using these computers like you know that Jurassic Park movie you have seen that is entire thing is computer controlled those big structures you know may be height may be uh, the, uh, 50, 50 feet 60 feet high you know those one or two models what they have shown. So, if you are doing that excellent or even if you are making at least beautiful cart cartoons very good no problem because cartoon movies and all that lot of computer work is there. So, at least you are using brain because if you are producing the same cartoon in two, uh, two movies no one will see the second movie that is why I feel that in movies only there is tremendous of innovation tremendous amount of innovation really I appreciate that how many dresses they change in one song I say and you have to think so much right. No one will go to that movie first information you will go it is same thing as other movie close ok. So, that is all and they are spending thousands of and, and fights oh my god sometimes I think if man is not sufficient two cars will come and fight <laughs> and uh, two aeroplanes will come and fight oh my god anything tremendous innovation is only in movies. So, if you have that kind of innovation no problem, but in chemical engineering that innovation is there ok. Why? Because every chemical is new to me if it is already existing like sulfuric acid I told you know what is the first step sulfur is burnt to sulfur dioxide then sulfur dioxide is converted to 
sulfur trioxide and we know the catalyst and the beauty is the first one is non catalytic reaction it is sulfur plus oxygen giving you so2 the second reaction so2 to so3 is so2 plus of yeah of o2 giving you so3 in the presence of vanadium pentoxide how do i know the first one doesn't have any catalyst the second one has catalyst how do i know that okay and this is not only the final process final process but can you produce also sulfuric acid this so2 to so3 without catalyst that is why it is beautiful engineering chemical engineering unfortunately many people mistake that with chemistry right so like that any process you take ammonia i told you bring down the bring down the temperature now i think people are working on that now i think the temperature has come down to around 130 or so earlier it was 250 how much was the temperature i don't remember exact value for ammonia 550 and uh, pressure 3, 350 ah okay Oh, yeah, okay, 200 bar, and then this is 550. You bring down that one to 100 or 200 degrees centigrade. How much energy is saved? And bring down the pressure from uh, 200 to 250 atmosphere to even 10 atmospheres. Your design will be so simple now. Otherwise, you are operating an atom bomb at uh, 250 centi. I mean, uh, atmospheres. That is why the original uh, reactor which I see, which I saw there in Germany. i think uh, you know the nut and bolt itself is this thick and then this long solid iron and the flanges thickness i think is 6 inches or 8 inches yeah i think i have that photo also i have taken i will show you sometime i will bring and then show you that one okay so that is the kind of thing all that materials of construction all that will be will become very very less in the moment you come to you know of course room temperature is too ambitious but at least 100 degree centigrade so that is why everywhere research 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 in chemical engineering provided you don't know the process that means someone would have already done that sulfuric acid also it took a long time for the development in fact because of sulfuric acid only chemical engineering started i don't know how many of you really know this because of purely uh, the sulfuric acid chemical engineering started because of that only what is the connection connection is industrial revolution in industrial revolution the first thing many people started doing that at that time was the steam engine and the next thing is all the people who are uh, trying to produce textiles as many as possible that's why manchester this uh, coimbatore also is called a uh, manchester of uh, india huh? ah okay why well, because the conditions are correct there to make the textiles and all that okay and for textiles you have to put dyes dye so to produce dyes you need sulfuric acid and sulfuric acid at that time was only produced in glass reactors how much big glass reactor you can make you cannot make bigger you cannot make more than 50 liters or 100 liters glass right so that's why they want to produce more and more that's why they have gone to that first process lead chamber process because of the corrosion then of course afterwards contact process this process that process many processes have come and during that time people realized that my god there is heat transfer coming there is mass transfer coming there is fluid flow coming and all these things are not there in one uh, engineering with reactions fluid flow mechanical do engineers do even civil engineers do hydraulics they call right and mass transfer to some extent the uh, mechanical engineers do in combustion because when they are burning coal without oxygen uh, you know they, they can't burn coal oxygen has to be supplied to to the uh, to the coal surface so then only the reaction takes place so that is the reason why there is some amount of uh, you know there some knowledge is required how much oxygen is being transferred continuously to the surface of coal so all those things also are heat transfer they are experts anyway they are better than us heat transfer because most of the time we don't worry about radiation but they will worry about radiation and all that right so they have more knowledge than us but still reactions means they will run away okay even now coal combustion they do but mainly coal combustion is controlled by mass transfer oxygen supply the kinetics you know but of course they are also they have increased the combustion science and technology they are doing also also a lot of work but all that can be done easily by chemical engineers so that's why you know chemical engineering started and that's why research is the one where in every process you need this what kind of research we do 
we do research as basic research, I will just write here, basic, we can also write exploratory and we have process research. process research C H yeah. okay. So, I do not know whether you know the meanings of all this, this is for uh, research. Basic research we call, we also say that oh we are doing fundamental research. If I take one example probably it will be easy for you to uh, remember this right. Let us talk about some catalytic reaction okay. for example, ammonia production itself right. So, recently uh, in 2008, I think, uh, that is recent only. One person got uh, Nobel Prize in Germany for uh, telling the mechanism of uh, this hydrogen, uh, sorry, ammonia synthesis, this hydrogen and nitrogen, how they combine on the surface, what is happening on the surface. He is not worried about what kind of reactor he, had to use, he has to use. He took the catalyst and then he wanted to study on the surface how the molecules are going and sitting what is the orientation that is for proper reaction and what is happening during the reaction all that he has designed the equipment and then shown that actually what is happening during reaction. And he also extended that study for CO carbon monoxide to carbon dioxide a few more reactions for that he got the Nobel prize. The greatest of him is that uh, his name is Ertel E R T L. We also wanted to bring him here, but I think he is not able to uh, it seems travel, maybe health is not good, right. So, that is why uh, the, he, he has shown what is happening particularly for CO, CO2, he excited a lot. It seems on the surface also there are some kind of waves generated during the reaction. If you go to his website Ertel, E R T L, okay, Nobel laureate Ertel, he has got a website where all this information is very nicely given, the mechanism is given. So, that is what we are talking here in the basic research. That, that much information is required for us, otherwise it is blind macroscopic research, okay. that is process research. What you, okay. you just uh, take a solid surface as catalyst, some solid trial and error, change the solid whether the reaction is taking place, no, this is no reaction, bring another solid, different metals. You go to periodic table and then take metals. If one is not producing any chemical, any, uh, any product, then mix two, two metals maybe I think you are telling you know iron and cobalt. Again percentage, what is the composition? You can vary from 0 to 100, 0 did not work, you know that. Okay. So, 100 also would have not worked at the other side. So, now in between combinations. So, that is what is trial and error research where not much theory, it is not basic, that is exploratory. That means, you are only trying to find out what is feasible, what is not feasible. Okay. And in the basic research, you just try to find out some new theories based on your observations. That is why I told you know, unless you have the experimental verification, no one will get Nobel uh, Prize uh, for only just producing theory. That is why theory producers be, you know, some of you also may be very much interested in theory, because you do not have to do the experiments. Experiments means doing uh, with hand, doing with hand, that means your hands may get dirtied, and most of you may not like it. Okay. And I tell you there is only pleasure in doing the experiments, because what you are doing you are seeing, you have the control. Whereas, in theory change the boundary condition, you will get another equation, another solution right in the, in the differential equations. Most of the time in theory you start with only differential equations. So, in theory what do you do? You imagine the process, take a small volume, if there is a continuous change in that volume and then you write the elemental balance on that birds towards light foot approach that book is famous only for that elemental volumes and then extend that from entry to exit that is boundary conditions and then solve this equation and when you are solving this equation you may find out what is the concentration change or the velocity change with the with the uh, distance okay or with the geometry in, inside the or inside uh, the particular equipment or temperature, concentration and velocity, only these three, mass, momentum and heat, right. That is all and from that you will now to try to find out the moment temperature is given, 
concentration is given, velocity is given, you can find out what is called flux. That means, you know how much has been transferred from one place to other place and all that. You know, you can find out, no, the moment we give an equation for concentration, can you find out flux? You cannot. I have concentration versus length as an equation. Flux you cannot find. What is fixed law definition? You know only definition, but you do not know how to use it. N A flux equal to what? Ah, DCA by? What is the DCA by DZ? Concentration gradient. Yeah, if I give you concentration versus length, but to find out that uh, differentiation and then evaluate wherever you want, right? Yeah. So then, why do you say that you don't know how to find out? Because application we, we don't know. We have theory, but we don't know how to apply that. In fact, that is one of the favorite problems in gate. When I was gate chairman, so that was in 2000. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So uh, that's a very nice problem, very simple problem. Because as as all of you know that you mug up beautifully fixed first law and second law. And you do not know when a, when a problem is given, how to use this information to find out flux. right? So, that is all. And in the basic research, what you find out is that kind of new theories. For example, you know um, in mass transfer, you have various theories, film theory right? and also Higby's penetration theory. And what is the third one? Surface, Surface, Surface renewal theory. All these theories are coming from basic research. In fact, these theories are not that basic as I told you. Uh, for this Nobel Prize, you know, on the surface, because still in this theory, penetration theory, we never talk about molecules. We talk about only a group of molecules, a bulk of molecules moving from one place to the other place. We know only in film theory, across the film, all the resistance is there, and uh, molecules are moving from uh, uh, this side to that side. But still, you are not worried about how individual molecules are moving. So that is why in the basic research what you try to do is development of new theories. Right? So, with the understanding of that catalyst, what kind of catalyst to use, what kind of you know, you know every catalyst has that holes, defects and all that. So, what kind of defects are required, all that you can produce if you understand that theory. That is what is basic research and we have the exploratory research where trial and error most of the time. Right? Catalyst is very good example. One catalyst you try, you do not know. Normally, we have one thumb rule that okay, this periodic table may give you, uh, you know, uh, uh, some of the periodic table elements will become uh, will behave as catalysts. So you take only those, and then try to find out whether this is, you know, what combination or a single uh, metal is useful for catalyst. All that trial and error that is exploratory. At the end, what you record is what is the for that particular reaction, what are possible catalysts, what are not possible catalysts. So, that others they need not again repeat. And in process uh, research, this is normally many people would not do except uh, the laboratories, uh, regional research laboratories or NCL Pona. So, they take the reaction, it is not only one reaction they uh, do it and you know you, you would have heard of laboratory scale, then pilot plant scale and then finally, commercial scale. Laboratory scale also there are two, three varieties, simple lab or bench scale. Bench scale where the chemical engineers come. Lab scale is only still chemists. Right? So, you conduct a, some experiment, experiments in the laboratory scale. You are not confident that straight away this can be scaled up to industrial uh, scale. So, then what you have to do? You have to do some experiments in between, and for that some experiment, you now decide whether you have to go for bench scale or pilot plant scale or the ultimate scale. Ultimate scale, direct scale up is not possible for many reactions. That is what, what we do in the process research. At the end of the process research, what you will have roughly, okay, on this 1 uh, kg scale, I have all the information starting from raw material to product. That means, if you want a condenser, you have to use a small glass column. If you have a reactor, use a small glass beaker. If it is a continuous one, I know you know input and output together. So, all that information, all that information you would like to get that in the process design, uh, no, sorry, process uh, research. Right? Laboratory scale only, you limit only till laboratory scale. The moment you come to process development, that is where you come to now uh, either bench scale or large scale or pilot plant scale. 
large scale I am talking compared to laboratory scale. So, in the process development what we do is using pilot plant and then trying to get as much as data possible, so that you will not have much problem in the actual scale. What data you get in process development for example, you have a bubble column, a single phase is not that uh, difficult, but two phase heterogeneous systems are difficult in scale up. Why? Because I may take a laboratory and then beautifully bubble, all bubbles are very nice same size and all that. The moment I go to very large you know reactors are as big as this rooms also. So, here how do I produce those kind of bubbles with uniform size? That is what is a big scale up problem. And you know in the laboratory small bubbles more uh, surface area per unit volume, but here in the large scale you have large bubbles surface area will decrease. So, you in the laboratory you may get 90 percent conversion, in the actual scale you may get only 30 percent conversion. Simply interfacial area is not reproducible at that scale. How do you do that to reproduce? Whether you go for multi stage, whether you put many many dispersers, whether you put stirrers where you break the bubbles or whether you put in between perforated plates, where big bubble will go and touch the perforated plate and it, it cannot pass through. So, that is why it has to break itself and then again go to, yeah, to the next uh, two plates all that. So, all that information is required here in the process development, so that you can go for big scale. 